Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be doing a follow-up to the time travel episode on Google Desktop which went up on the channel about a week ago now. And what we're going to be doing is trying to run these Google Desktop, well three versions of it here, the same three versions we took a look at in that original video, on Windows 10. This is something we do fairly often on this channel, and it was suggested by a couple of you guys, well, more than a couple of you guys, to do with Google Desktop, so we're going to be doing that right here, and uh, we're going to be seeing if we can get any of these versions to work on Windows 10. So we're going to essentially do the same thing we did in that video and start out with the very first version and then upgrade to these two other versions that we've got here. And we'll see, I mean, I assume that if the first version works, these other two versions won't really have any problems uh, working either. So let's just uh, get started with it. So we've got the first initial beta release right here. We're going to run it and see what happens. To install or run Google Desktop Search, you need administrator access. Okay, well we can give it administrator access. Not a problem. There we go. So it actually requires you, which makes sense. I mean, you, I assume that on Windows XP, you had to be using a administrator account that had administrator access, but here you have to authenticate that with user account control. And yeah, check that out. We've got Microsoft Edge opened up here, the new Chromium-based uh, version that comes with Windows 10 nowadays. And we've got the settings page right here. So we're going to enable search over AOL and AIM, enable search over HTTPS, as seen in Internet Explorer, uh, help us improve. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to set preferences and start searching. And check that out. Wow, it actually still works. We got the flyout notification here that's letting us know about the desktop search icon in the system tray, which is right here and it has indexed 78 items so far. So this is the initial beta version that does not have the sidebar. Uh, so, I mean, who knows, the sidebar might not work in the future versions, but judging from the fact that this version installed without any problems, I didn't even have to apply a compatibility layer. I think the other two are gonna work totally fine, but we're gonna test that out here momentarily. So let's try to close out of this and go to our icon in the system tray and let's go to about. So, okay, so we'll open up the uh, links down here with Internet Explorer, which makes sense. Waiting for 127.0.0.1, it should not really have to wait this long because it's localhost. This is a locally hosted uh, web page here. But it opens up with Edge, like if we were to copy this and paste it in Edge here, I wonder if it would work. Yeah, it works totally fine here in Edge, so... Internet Explorer, for whatever reason, is having trouble opening up this page, which is kind of the opposite of what I would think. I would think that if either of these two browsers had problems opening up one of these pages, it would be Edge. But, evidently, that is not the case. So let's try to just go to the root directory. And that's not even working. Is is this just... Can we go to Google.com? Oh, no, it's just Internet Explorer being stupid, as usual. Okay, so that's... <laughs> Because it's just not even going to any website. Honestly, I don't know why that is. Yeah, I mean, it's just not... Well, it's not working in Internet Explorer, but that doesn't matter because it works in, in Edge, though the problem is all of these links open it up in Internet Explorer. Like, you can't open these pages in Edge because uh, these are just... At least, I would assume, it, these are coded to open up iExplore.exe as opposed to whatever the default browser is. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, I don't really know why Internet Explorer is having trouble here. But we can, if we want to just like, we could make a shortcut um, and just like, let's go into Google Desktop here. And let's just copy the web address and just paste the web address there. And then we can call this Google Desktop. And there we go. So it doesn't have the same icon. We could change this if we want to, and we could go to, uh, let's go to local disk, program files, where it be, Google, Google Desktop Search. Could probably, yep, just take this icon right here and delete that one. Boom, there we go. So this will open up with Edge. Oh, apparently that's an invalid request. So I guess you can't just go, I, I thought you could go to just the top level directory. I guess not. Well, that's no problem. We can just change it to this specific address here. And there we go. It'll work totally fine. So it has indexed 78 items. We can go to status here and see. So most of those items are files. Uh, and there's one uh, web history, which I wonder if that's going to pull from Internet Explorer. 
or uh, if it will actually search through Edge's uh, web history. So uh, let's just do a search. Can we do like wild cards here? Can we search for star dot star? I guess not. Okay. Uh, let's just search for Google. It found Google in open source licenses txt. Uh, how about um, I've got? Gee, I don't even have any documents on here. Can it search through programs? Can we do a search for like calculator? No. So what are these 78 files that it has indexed? Or 77 files. Uh, can it find exe files? Uh, one of these is first.exe. And that works. So yeah, here's first.exe right here. So it shows that. But we can search the web too if we want. Let's do a search for Michael MJD. And this time, since we're on a modern web browser, it will pull up the proper search results page on Google here, which is pretty great. So there you go. Yeah, guys, it works totally fine. I mean, like I said, aside from the uh, shortcuts in here, opening up Internet Explorer, uh, it works great. So let's move on to beta two here, and we're gonna run this as an administrator once more. And there we go, Google Desktop has been updated, and we just have to restart the system, so we'll do that. All right, so we've logged back in here. It doesn't appear to have opened up the web page that it usually does when you upgrade, and then it kind of tells you, uh, like it has you change some, some settings. It is running down here in the system tray, and we do have uh, more options down here, meaning that uh, this is the newer version. And the sidebar is not displayed right now. We should be able to hit sidebar, and there we go. Check it out. Man, this, this works totally fine. It's all here. Obviously, like in the other video, I mean, none of these plugins, I, I keep wanting to say gadgets, but they were called plugins at this point. None of these plugins, uh, or not all of them, but uh, pretty much all the ones that are that rely on any sort of server to be up, like maps here and uh, news do not display anything anymore. But I wonder if this quick view thing will work. So like if we open up Edge and go to google.com and close out of it, I wonder if it's gonna search web history through Internet Explorer. Cause I'm pretty sure like I went to, the, yeah, Edge right here. That's the Edge icon. All right, this is Michael from the future here during the editing process. So one thing that I noticed while going through this footage is those three links that are displaying in the sidebar right now, all of them were opened with Internet Explorer. And I wasn't able to open up Edge and browse to a website and then have it show up in the sidebar like it does in Windows XP with our Internet Explorer browsing history. So my guess is this is still pulling from Internet Explorer's browsing history, but for some reason showing the Edge logo instead of the Internet Explorer logo for whatever reason. But that's what's going on here. Uh, but it does work. It still displays web browsing history just again with Internet Explorer as opposed to Edge. Uh, let's try the uh, instant search down here. So let's search for, uh, yeah. Can we search for calculator? Okay, so it's not able to find calculator. That is a program on here. Okay, oh, well, it is still indexing, you can see up here, so it's not gonna have the system fully indexed yet. But uh, in the XP, I mean, when we did this under Windows XP, uh, the hard drive size wasn't as large, so it didn't take as long to index. But like, you could open up Word, and like open up programs from here, open up documents. Uh, let's do a search for Google. So it's found that same open source licenses txt we can obviously choose to search uh search with google desktop search i'm feeling lucky let's see if this works i don't think i tried this in the original video if we search with i'm feeling lucky what will it do oh I, it probably won't open up anything because these are all well it should open up internet explorer it doesn't even seem to be doing that i wonder if it just i mean if it can't find the program like i would think that just like in the first version all of these functions would be coded to open up the page in Internet Explorer, but it was able to do that before. It doesn't seem to be doing anything now. I wonder if it's even running in the background. No, it's not running in the background. I'm typing in iExplorer. It is not showing up. So Internet Explorer is not even running. So this did not, like when we did a search, like if we, Michael MJD, search web, just doesn't do anything. So it appears that the functionality for this down here, at least for some of it, is not working properly. But the gadgets still work, uh, or the plugins may still work totally fine. Uh, at least the ones that don't require any sort of web connectivity. So like the scratch pad, I can say hello world and have that there. I wonder if the photos one will, will work. Let's try to add. Okay, this looks like it's gonna do the same thing 
that it did in XP. It's, it already has the pictures folder in here. Let's just download, save image as, and we'll save it to pictures. Okay, so we got it downloaded. It's in here. I know that under XP, this did not, even by going in and adding the folder again, it did not uh, display anything. Oh, there it is. Oh, it worked. So it actually displays pictures in here. Maybe I didn't remove the folder and re-add it under XP, but it does work. So that's pretty cool. And I just noticed you can resize the sidebar so it can, it can take up half your desktop if you wanted to, which is pretty cool. Or it could be really tiny. All right, guys. I mean, let's jump to uh, taking a look at the next version here. The last version we took a look at in that video, which was the, yeah, the very last version actually of Google Desktop. So we'll go to uh, downloads here. We've got last.exe right here. We're gonna run this as an administrator. And it's gonna once again, let us know that Google Desktop has been updated. So we'll restart now. All right, so we're back and I can see that the icon has changed to the newer Google Desktop icon here. We can still, this is the internet shortcut we made. So this will still open up the desktop uh, search here, or maybe, oh, I wonder if it wasn't even, well, it's not running. We can double click on Google Desktop here, and yeah, there we go. Yeah, there is definitely some functionality of Google Desktop that is not working. Oh, enable Google Desktop, it wasn't enabled? No, that, that, that doesn't even change. Yeah, for whatever reason, trying to open up Google Desktop, like searching and searching the web, does not do anything. Like these, these links are just broken, but, on the bright side, it came up with this uh, features window. This is what I was hoping it would show before in the last version. It just showed this in Internet Explorer under XP, but uh, it shows this one here. So this just lets you know about the terms of service and all that. So we have to agree. And uh, let's just say yes, search the contents of Gmail, web history, and deleted files. Sure. Display news. Sure. So we hit done. And there we go. So we've got all the gadgets in the same order over here. So we've got our, our Bliss uh, image right here. My Hello World note. This is the RSS feed. I think the, I think this is the news program up here that's uh, just indefinitely loading. So we can close that. We can close this one. Uh, let's close the weather since it's not going to work. And we've got our to-do list, which we can expand um, by doing this. So let's say, you know, make a video and boom, there we go. So there's our to-do list. Say I want this up here. Uh, let's check out the shortcuts in here. So can we go to options? The options page opens up in the web browser. I don't know why it's not working all of a sudden. And this shortcut on the desktop doesn't work. Oh, well, we can open up the shortcut that we made with the previous version that used to open the search page. Now it doesn't because it's an invalid request. Going to the root directory doesn't work. Yeah, but none of these links down here work. Search desktop doesn't work. Options, so we can't change the options. Uh, we can change the sidebar, you know, say we wanna have the floating desk bar. So yeah, that's really all we can do. Uh, we can add gadgets though. I mean, we got the, the plus button up here. We can add, uh, and I don't see why these, uh, I mean, obviously, like I said, the ones that require uh, an internet connection to, well, we, we have an internet connection, but to connect to a server that's not exist anymore, obviously it's not going to work, but we can go down to, um, like, say we want to get the analog clock, say we want to get, um, system monitor, all of this stuff's going to work totally fine. And we can obviously move the, the sidebar over to the left side of the screen if we want to. Well, there you have it, everybody. Google Desktop, uh, at least these three versions, partially work here on Windows 10. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who suggested this on the original video. Uh, your suggestions always help. And if you have any at any time, be sure to drop them down below. Shoot me an email. Send me a Twitter DM, whatever. Uh, there's multiple ways you guys can get in contact with me, and uh, yes, I do read uh, the comments, I read your Twitter DMs, I read your emails, and I try to uh, do videos on the uh, suggestions that you guys want to see the most. So, if you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you want to see more like it, be sure to give this one a thumbs up and get subscribed down below. And uh, as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.